Hello YouTube. Starting again is the MacBook Pro 1.1 or the early 2006 15 inch model with the 2 GHz Core Duo and 2 GB of RAM, ATR X1600, 120 GB Kingston V300 SSD. And uh, that's pretty much all I need to know. So, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Let's, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. You've already noticed by the video title, of course, this machine is now running Windows 10. At least if it would post. Hello? There we go. Let's wait there for a little bit. No idea what it took so long, but uh, oh well. But yeah, I've installed Windows 10 on it. At first I had a bootcamp partition with Windows 7. Uh, I upgraded that to Windows 10 Pro. So now I have a uh, motherboard linked uh, license for this particular laptop. So now I'm just watching it boot up. It just did a run of Windows updates, so uh, it's going to take a little while. But today we are going to take a look at how Windows 10 performs on this 2006 machine. We're going to take a look at uh, web browsing performance, local media consumption, office productivity, and just overall usability and uh, to see where the restraints really are. I can tell you this, having only 2 gigabytes of RAM in 2017 is pretty low. But then again, this is the latest operating system that Microsoft offers, um, and it is still perfectly up to date with all software, uh, rather than Snow Leopard, that is running on the uh, primary partition on this MacBook Pro, that is pretty much close to being obsolete now, because there are no up-to-date browsers available for it. Firefox has dropped support at ESR 38, um, or f yeah, I think 38 was the last version. Uh, Chrome 38 was the last version, that's already uh, quite old. And uh, Safari won't even play YouTube video anymore. So the only way to really have good media consumption performance is to run Windows on it, quite frankly. So that's what we're going to find out. Is Windows usable on this 2006 machine? Alright, now the machine has finished booting up. We're looking at the task manager here. Let me give you a better look at the numbers. We're currently looking at about 2%, 3% CPU usage on idle and 42% memory usage. Because we only have 2GB of RAM, this memory usage is actually not that bad. We're using about 800 megabytes right now. Yes, I know there is dangerous software on this. I freaking used a crack to install Office 2013. Sue me, seriously. Anyway. It's just for testing purposes anyway on this machine. So let's start with the productivity benchmarks. Let's open up Microsoft Word. This is the 2013 version. There we go. Let's open up a nice template here. Let's see what kind of performance we get. Let's manipulate this a little bit. Scrolling through this with these graphics is absolutely fine. So the Radeon X1600 is accelerating that nicely, despite having a driver from the year 2008. Well, let's just zoom in and out a little bit, let's see how that goes. As we can conclude, Word runs absolutely fine on this. Now that we conclude that Office work should be more than uh, adequate in terms of performance on the MacBook Pro, we should uh, move it up a notch and go to the web. I will say this, don't use Firefox if you're going to use any media uh, online. I'm saying this because um, the current version of Firefox for Windows 10 runs very, very poorly. Yeah, let's Bing a website, yeah. But it runs very, very poorly, impacts the CPU 100% all the time. Edge does not do this, loads pages just as quickly, and uh, overall, it's actually quite smooth, I have to say, on this. 
Yeah, that's just freaking fast, man. Let's get to CNN.com, which was the obligatory version or website that we want to take a look at. Utterly ridiculous. Yeah, that's Trump, all right? That's him in a nutshell. I shouldn't get all political, I don't think. As you can see, this is really smooth. I mean, the scrolling never actually chops because it has to load in a little bit. You can just scroll through all these images just fine. I mean, this is just a 32-bit core duo, which is basically two Pentium M's glued together and put on, the, on one chip. So, it's pretty remarkable, especially you saw it, if you saw my video about the uh, is the Pentium M obsolete uh, first part video where I also tested the Pentium M in Windows 10. That was absolutely horrible. I mean, it was usable to a certain extent, but this is just, this is more than twice as fast, I'm pretty sure. So let's just go to YouTube here. I've got this video here. We're going to take a look at uh, media playback now. Uh, fucking ass. This is a Lamborghini LM002. In Lamborghini's long It doesn't want to pause. Come on, pause. Thank you. Let's go full screen. And we're going to set it to 720p. It went to 1080. That's maybe a bit too much for this. Let's try 720 and start playing the video. Cars, and it is a long history. This is the craziest, the most ridiculous, the most amazing. And right now, LMO2 is as comfortable as Well, it's perfectly smooth. You can definitely see all the scenery in the background moving. It's at moving at the same pace as it should be. So that's good. Let's kick it up a notch, shall we? Let's see if it can do 1080p. I know Snow Leopard, uh, I've tried it since Snow Leopard, it can do this. Um, Chrome can do 720p, but 1080 is just, it, it, it starts, you know, you can definitely see the video lagging behind the audio pretty quickly. Frame rate dips to a, a very low point. So let's try 1080p. Yeah, this is 1080p. It chops a little bit here and there. You can definitely see a little bit of frame skipping here and there. But this is totally watchable, I'd say. It's just really slow to respond because the CPU is pegged, obviously. But that's not bad at all. I really wasn't expecting that result, that's for sure. Let's try uh, some local playback. Well, we're going to play it over the network because it's it's hooked up to gigabit Ethernet, so that shouldn't be a bottleneck at all. Uh, let me just log into my NAS here real quick. All right, I pulled up a Blu-ray uh, movie here. This you is called Fiction. Show cops? I was watching it one time, and there was this, this cop on. He was talking about about this gunfight he had yep. in the hallway. With 1080p this playback guy, right? locally is oh, absolutely fine. Yep, that's absolutely fine. There's no other word for it. So local media playback at 1080p is fine. YouTube at 1080p appears to be fine as well. Um, browsing the web is perfectly smooth as long as you use Microsoft Edge. Um, overall uh, operating system, you know, just moving around the OS is perfectly fine. It's very smooth. I mean, it definitely makes a difference to have an SSD in a machine like this. And it definitely makes more of a difference than you might think, even though it's just an old computer. As long as it has a SATA interface, you should just put an SSD in it regardless. Especially if it's a dual-core machine, even if it's just a low-end, uh, like Turion 64X2, it should definitely make a difference, for sure. Let's just you know, this clean up here. I mean, everything just pops up pretty quickly as, as you would expect from a modern PC with like a hard drive or something. It, it matches that more closely than like a new version, like a new PC with it with an SSD. It's definitely not as close to that as you might think. Um, it's more like a new PC with a hard drive. That's pretty much how it runs. So it's perfectly usable for everyday tasks, that's for sure. And this machine is 11 years old. That's the most amazing thing about the, all of this. The, the thing that struck me the most is just the fact that it could run 1080p YouTube. I mean, you can't do that under Mac OS X. 
and there are some other things that uh, Mac OS X on this machine is just not suitable for. Um, most notably the fact you can't run an up-to-date browser on OS X Snow Leopard. This machine cannot run anything newer than Snow Leopard. Well, technically it could run a sort of unstable version of 10.7.2 uh, Lion, that is. But uh, I really don't feel like uh, going that route because Lion was not really designed to run in 32-bit mode all that much. So and, and some stuff just simply stops working like sleep and stuff like that. So I really don't feel like doing that. Uh, I might try to just give it, you know, give it a shot and show you what it's like. I will uh, attempt that at least. But uh, Snow Leopard is definitely very obsolete at this point in terms of web browsing experience. Safari can load most pages, but it can no longer play YouTube. Uh, Firefox bogs the system down uh, as well, uh, to the point where you can't even watch 480p YouTube. It just sticks to 100% CPU. And um, well, Chrome is, is perfectly fine though. You can watch 720p YouTube, no problem, and work in your Word doc, Word, uh, bleh, work in your Word document in the background. Words are hard. Uh, so that's all perfectly fine still. Well, now, uh, the elephant in the room is, should you consider putting Windows 10 on your MacBook Pro then? I mean, I show that it works pretty well. Uh, I would say yes, but with a slight warning. Some stuff will not work on this machine. Um, you can't really get uh, bootcamp drivers for this machine anymore, so you have to use generic bootcamp 2 drivers that came with like Snow Leopard DVD or stuff like that. Most things will work, audio will work, the graphics card will work, um, Network cards will work, they will just update their drivers. Uh, same goes for the audio, basically. Um, the Gigabit Ethernet, the Wi Fi, and Bluetooth, that, that stuff all works. Um, your touchpad stops working, you will not have keyboard backlighting. Uh, function keys on the, on the keyboard don't work. Um, screen brightness adjustment does not work. Um, and a webcam does work. So, yeah. So, I have to use an external mouse, basically, and um, you have to run the screen at full brightness all the time. I'm not sure if there's a fix for this. Maybe there's a Bootcamp 4 update for this particular machine that uh, I just haven't been able to find. Maybe that'll work some work, work some stuff out. I mean, it wasn't even Bootcamp 2 is not even compatible with Windows 7. It's just compatible with XP and Vista. So the next stop, of course, in this machine would be to run the Bootcamp partition with Vista and see if that's any good. But uh, that's a video for, well, that's, that's a story for a different video. Uh, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed this video on this uh, overview of how Windows 10 runs on a 2006, early 2006 MacBook Pro. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.